Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. And sorry for tonight video. For tonight's video, I'm going to go through the social studies SBA. So this is a guideline for all those who are going to take on the social studies SBA. So if you've already done your SBA, you can share with persons who you know who are about to do their SBA. Right? I think that this video will be very helpful for them. Okay, let's get started with the Social Studies SVA. All right, so they are, there are nine tasks that should be completed for the SVA. So one, you need a statement of problem, then rationale or reason for selecting area of research, then you need to have a method of investigation, um, instrument used to collect data, procedures for data collection, which is task five, six is presentation of data, seven is interpretation or explanation of data, eight is findings, and then nine, recommendation and implementation strategy. There are some other tenets to the SBA as well, and we are going to go through that as we go deeper into the procedure. All right, great. So here are a few things that you should bear in mind before you actually start the SBA. Good? All right. Do not put fancy decorations all over the cover. <laughs> all over the cover, right? Those things you don't get any marks for, right? So if, if you have so-called pretty pretty top, you're not going to get any extra marks for it. And then sometimes it becomes very distracting. Right, so you have to be extremely careful with that. Good. The font should be Times New Roman and size 12, which is standard. Good. The, this is saying that a smaller font may be used in terms of a table, if you're labeling a table or you're labeling a graph, a pie chart or a bar graph. Yes. The entire document should be double space, or you can do mm, 1.5. Yeah, 1.5 is good for me as a teacher, not necessarily double space all the time. Good. And this is telling you about the, right, the margin, top right and bottom margin set at one inch each. The left margin should be set at 1.5 inch each. Good. Here's a tip. Set your margins and font size first. This will save you time in the long run. So before you start typing anything on Microsoft Word, you set your margin, you select your font and you select your font size before you start typing so everything that you type thereafter will be synced right or synchronized and you won't have any problem because sometimes when you when, when you type using the default font font size and margin it gives you a whole lot of problem whenever you're trying to change it all right let's get to the sba now good statement of the problem Let's get to that. Good. Select a problem that affects the individual. The problem must be written in the form of a question drawn from sections A, B, or C of the syllabus, right? That is from family all the way up to resources, right? Those are the areas that you can get the social problem from to use for your SBA. If you have a book called Modules in Social Studies, that's a good book. It has a whole lot of SBA ideas in it, in the middle of the book, and there's also a sample SBA in there. So Modules in Social Studies, you can use that book, and it will give you a lot of SBA ideas that you can pick from or choose from. Good. So for example now, we you are looking at insane persons, as you can see on the screen, in, insane persons, right? Social problems caused by insane persons. So the topic is insane persons. And you're looking specifically at social problems caused by insane persons. 3A says, what are some of the social problems caused by insane persons in my community? 3B says, how does the presence of insane persons on the street contribute to social problems in the lives of citizens in the community of stadium gardens? So that's an example of what the question is. Research questions are aims. These are three broad questions which are supposed to guide you throughout the research in collecting your data used as guides. 
These are the questions which should be answered when the research is completed. They should be placed below your statement of a problem. All right, so let's get this straight. So you need a statement of problem and three research questions. So a statement of problem should be in the form of a question, right? For example, if we go back, we can see it. Uh, let's go back, not forward. Jeez, um, what is wrong with this thing, man? Let's go back and see the example of what the research question should be right here good what are some of the social problems caused by insane persons in the community that's an example of the statement of the problem remember that we said that this should be in the form of a question after the statement of the problem now you need three research questions below that those three research questions should surround cause effect and solution to the social problem that you are investigating good so what are some of the social problems caused by insane persons so that covers cause how does the problem impact the lives of residents? Impact, looking at the effect of a problem on residents. Then third, it says what can be done to correct this problem? Good, so we look at cause, effect, and solution for our three research questions after we have written our statement of problem in the form of a question. I hope you're following. Good. So there it is, an example is given. How does the presence of insane persons on the street in the Stadium Gardens community contribute to social problems for residents? That is a statement of a problem, and we can see that it is in the form of a question. Then now there are three research questions that are on cause, effect, and solution. What are some of the social problems caused by insane persons? Two says, how do these problems impact the lives of residents? Three says, what can be done to correct these problems? Good. So everybody is on board or on course so far. Good. Then now we need a rationale or a reason for selecting area of research, right? What has caused you to carry out this research? What have you seen, right? Where got the motivation from to actually carry out a research to in this to investigate this social issue or social problem good in this section you must write a short paragraph explaining how you became aware of this problem and the reason for doing the research right so some questions to think about when you're writing your rationale or your reason for selecting area of research is the problem worthy of investigation what will be revealed why did i choose this topic how was the problem discovered through media report observation how so you're going to say how the problem was um, discovered and the reason why you are carrying out the investigation. So this is one of the easier parts of the SBA. Good. Then now you need a method of investigation. Good. So state the method that you will use to collect data from the research and justify and by giving two advantages of the method chosen. You can use questionnaire, interview, observation, and or text, non-text materials. You can use one of these methods or you can use a combination, right? Many times questionnaire usually combines with a mini interview, right? And we're going to look at all three and the advantages of using them. Good. Now, we're looking at explain how the questionnaire is designed, right? State how long the interview is expected to take for the observation. How will the observation be conducted? Non-text material, explain whether it will be books, websites, journals. Guys, we know we're in the internet age, so you can go on the information and find credible information, information, right? And you need to give two advantages of whatever method that you have decided to use. Following, now we look at the instrument used to collect data. You have to design an instrument that is relevant for the topic chosen. Good, so if we're looking at the impact of insane persons in the community, a questionnaire or an interview would be best. You can use either one or you can use a combination of two. Good, if you're using a questionnaire, you need to construct the questionnaire. Interview, list the questions you will ask in the interview. Observation, make an observation checklist. And you have to do some research to find out what an observation checklist is. You should do, a, do carry out a research about any method that you are using. Don't think that you know 
or just go and do whatever you feel like. You have to carry out research so that you can be informed. Because remember, you need two advantages as well, you know, for any instrument that you are going to use. And you need to know as much about the instrument so that you can construct a very good instrument so that you can get maximum points for this section of the SBA. Go now pay attention because this part that is coming up is really, really important. Good questionnaires. This is really an interview on paper. Be sure to take the following into consideration. So you have to think about these things if you are going to use a questionnaire. Use clear and unambiguous language. So the language must be clear, right? Remember that you have to cater to your target audience, you know. So you can't have any question having a double meaning or persons become confused after reading and don't know what to write. Good. Do not use jargons which may be unfamiliar to the respondents because sometimes they think that people know little jargons or little slangs, but really and truly some persons don't know what they mean. Avoid asking negative questions. For example, do you think insane persons are disgusting? That's, that's negative, right? And to look bad on you as a researcher. Do not use double barreled question example. Do you have problems with insane persons or state the problem? Do you have problems or you can restate this by saying, what kind of problems do you have with insane persons and list the items? What? Use short, precise and clear questions when using a questionnaires. When constructing your questionnaire, give an introduction including your name, the purpose of the research, assure residents that the data given will be confidential. Give instructions on how to respond to the items. Example, place a tick or write on the lines provided. Use examples where necessary. And thank the respondents for their participation. Usually this, I tell my students to do this in the form of a letter, right? They either show it to each respondent or they read it to the respondent because not everybody might be able to read that well. So you need to read and explain what exactly you want them to do, right? So this should be contained in the letter to the respondents, right? Let's continue now. Make the questions clear and evenly spread, right? Number the items on the page. Organize the questions in logical sequence based on research questions. So we shouldn't have a solution to the problem being the first question on the questionnaire, right? Questions must be in sequential order, right? Do not put important questions last, right? Avoid too many yes and no's. So for example, Question should be in sequence. So cause question should come first, then impact or effect question, then solutions after. Understand? Limit yes and no questions to two. Only two yes and, yes and no questions whenever you are using a questionnaire. Good? Use force choice and open-ended questions. This will allow respondents to share feelings, ideas, and opinions. I normally tell my students that to keep open-ended questions to a limit of two. Because many times, open-ended questions are very difficult to actually analyze and tabulate because high school students sometimes don't have the, 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 the requisite skills to actually analyze open-ended questions. So I like to stick to close-ended, right? Or not necessarily so close-ended, but questions where the respondents are are given the suggested answers by the researcher. So they just place a tick in the box for a questionnaire because that is easier to analyze and work with. Because you don't want to give yourself too much work for the SBA, which is sometimes unnecessary. Good. Advantages of a questionnaire. It saves time, it saves time, sorry, and labor as it can reach a wider sample in a short time. Anonymity is guaranteed since respondents do not need to attach their names, right? And people love to know that their information or their identity will be kept confidential. It will allow them to be very honest in answering the questions. Good. Interviews now. The interview involves a collection of data through direct verbal interaction between the researcher and respondents. Therefore, it is important that you make a list of logically sequenced questions beforehand. There must be room for forced choice and open-ended questions. Also, the interview, you have to plan the questions before and don't go in front of the respondents and it's on the spot you're making up the questions, right? Because it is going to look like you don't know what you're doing. 
and then you probably might not cover all the areas for the research because you're thinking on spot. This, the question should be things that you've thought out before. Understand that? And it's almost some of the same things like the question here. Make appointments to schedule each interview because each interview is going to take time because sometimes you need to, to have follow-up questions, right, to get all the information that you need for the research, right? Interviews can be between 10 to 20 minutes for each person. Persons must be in, informed about the purpose. Make sure you record your data accurately. You can ask the interviewer, the interviewee, if you can record. Or if they say, no, that you can't record, then you will have to write. So you have to ensure that you capture accurate information. Advantages of the interview, right? It allow the researcher to record either by writing or electronically or their visual recording. The responses to the questions asked, persons who might not be literate can answer questions, right? So persons can talk instead of write. Good questions can be clarified on the spot so that interview may get a better understanding of what is being asked because you're there talking sometimes. Interviewees don't understand the questions. They can say they don't understand or you can observe that they don't understand and you can explain to them. Good observation. This method involves watching and recording what the members of the sample group are doing or how they are behaving. Please note that in order to get a true picture, the researcher must observe on several occasions. So you don't just observe one time. You have to go more than one time to observe, right? And you pick up patterns. Good. There are two types of observations possible. The researcher can become a participant observer where you participate in whatever activity you are researching. Or you can be a watching part, sorry, a watching observer where you just watch the proceedings from a distance. Good. A checklist is necessary to record behaviors. Observer, you have to research what a checklist is. Advantages of observation. It allows the researcher to observe the sample size in large groups. It allows the researcher to observe persons' true behavior, hence there is no chance of pretense because many times you're observing, people don't know that you're observing, so they can't put on a show. You will see the real them, or you will see this re the real truth. Um, feeling of the social issue or the social problem. Good. Now let's look at the procedure used to collect data. This is where you describe how you choose your sample location. Identify the number of persons in the sample, their gender, age group, civil status, how the instrument was administered, how were they returned, if a questionnaire, observation checklist, length of the interview, and so on. So for the Procedure used to collect data, describe the data collection method. Describe how the sample was chosen. So describe how you actually choose who you're going to interview, who you're going to observe, or who you're going to give the questionnaires to. Right? What are the characteristics of the sample? Their age, gender, occupation, etc. Describe the location as well where necessary. Good. Now we're going on to the presentation and explanation of data. I think this carries about, carry about six marks, right? So this is heavy. Good. In preparation for this task, you must collect all your instruments that are your questionnaires, your interview notes, your observation checklist. Good. And compile a tally sheet showing the number of respondents to each item. Tally must be done for both closed and open-ended questions. So don't leave out your open-ended questions because often people forget to tell you their open-ended questions. Remember to compare respondents' opinions and suggestions for each response. Identify similarities and differences. Example, if two persons give you the same or similar response, both can be tallied together and the differences separately. This is a challenge that a lot of students have with open-ended questions. So that is why I am saying to students, I said to my students, if you don't have to put open-ended questions on the questionnaire, don't put them. Or if you have to, limit it to two. However, for if you're doing an interview, you have to use open-ended questions, right? That is a must for interviews. Good. Now we get to the presentation and explanation of data. This is the task that carries the most marks. This is eight marks, right? Many times students don't do this. Good. Many times students don't do this good.
Your next task is to display the information you have received appropriately on different types of charts. Example, histograms, pictograms, pie charts. Each must be well labeled. Sorry, I don't think this carries eight marks. I think this carries about six marks. Yes. The data must be explained and interpreted for each chart. Explanation given must be in percentages. If you have 20 questions on your questionnaire, you do not have to show a diagram for each. Diagram displayed must be answering your research questions. All right? This now, the information for this has been updated. I'm so sorry that I never actually updated before I do this video. All right? So now for the charts, you don't have to interpret each chart with presentation and explanation of data. Because here, you know, to explain, you present alone here. So you present the charts, right? You must present the charts in three different ways, right? If you have 20 questions, you are going to pick out the questions that are most important to the research. So pick out the questions that surround cause, effect, and solution, right? So those questions would be most important. So you choose probably four to eight questions to present. Good? So ensure that they are accurate and well labeled. You can use Microsoft Excel, I think, to me. This it's probably not so difficult. You can always go on YouTube and learn how to do pie chart, bar graph, and so on. Good? Data must be displayed in at least three different ways, right? Three separate pie charts, as this is saying, is only counted as one way, right? Do not use line graph unless you are presenting um, continuous data, right? Good, so use pie chart, bar graph, tables, probably a pictogram. Those might be relevant. Good, so here's an example. Problems caused by insane persons. We have graffiti at 58%. Packing garbage in, in inappropriate places, 23%. Throwing projectiles, 10%. Stealing personal property, 9%. Many times when persons use pie chart or bar graph, they don't put the percentage on it. You have to put the percentage on it so when, that, when your teacher is marking or if your SP is being second marked by CXC, they know that the information is accurate. So down at the base, so for pie chart, bar graph, you pictograms you call them as figures right so if you have say two pie pie charts so it's figure one figure two you have a bar graph the bar if the bar graph comes after the bar graph will be figure three another pie chart it will be figure four for tables you label them as table one table two table three so all you need to do first back in the day you'd have to explain and say pie chart showing that 58 percent of the um of insane persons usually um, cause a lot of graffiti on the walls. You don't need to do that anymore. You just say pie chart showing problems caused by insane persons and you move on. Good, here's an example of a pictogram. So the circle with the slash in it represents 1% and the triangle represents 10%, right? So everything should add up to 100. And if you actually count it off, you realize that it is 100. Remember, graffiti was 58. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. Packing garbage in places. 10, 20, 23, 10. Stealing 2, 4, 6, 8. Get it? Right. Then now, line graph wouldn't be appropriate for this. So we say stay away from line graph if you are not presenting continuous data. Good. Analysis and interpretation now. This carry eight marks, right? So this is very heavy. A lot of times students don't do this part good either. Right, sometimes students get zero out of eight, one out of eight, two out of eight, because for the analysis and interpretation of data, all they do is just represent the data by saying 58% of insane persons contribute to graffiti. Another X percent um, put garbage in inappropriate places. Another one, another person cont um, contributes to 
noise pollution and leave it right there. There's no analysis or interpretation on that. All you do, you're just representing the data, which you would have already done at task six. So if you do that again at task seven, you will not get any marks for it. You will get absolutely no marks. So you have to be careful for the analysis and interpretation of data. In this task, you must analyze the data according to the research questions or objectives. Remember, this is what you set out to discover. So state research questions, I suppose, in task one, then discuss what the data collected revealed in relation to the question. Remember, I say, when you are presenting the data, you must select the questions which surround cause, effect, and solution of the problem that you are investigating. Good? For example, the respondent stated that 8% of the respondents stole personal property. However, the majority of 59% stated that their major problems were graffiti, right? That shouldn't say respondents, should be um, insane persons. This could be assumed that when persons were at work in the days, the insane persons were damaging their property. However, it is interesting to note that only 23% felt that the insane persons were destroying the aesthetics of their community by packing garbage in inappropriate places. One would have thought that this would be the major challenge faced by residents. Many persons might be thinking that, oh my God, this is hard and this might be difficult, but it is not. So in layman terms or in lighter language to analyze and interpret the data you are going to say what you think the data is saying backed up by your knowledge and also additional research that you would have done what's the eight percent of the respondents stole personal property eight percent of the the respondents stated that insane persons stole property. However, the majority of 59% stated that their major problem was graffiti, right? You're going to say what you think this means to you as this example did a while ago. This could be assumed that when persons were at work in the days, the insane persons were damaging their property. However, understand, say, put your own spin on it. For example, if we're looking at, say, teenage pregnancy, right and a question says what do you think are the major causes of teenage pregnancy right and like 60 percent of the respondents say that teenagers having sex without using a condom right so you present that in the presentation of data in the analysis right you're going to say 60 percent of the respondents stated that one of the major causes of teenage pregnancy is that teenagers are not using condoms while having sex this could mean that teenagers don't have access to these condoms, or it could mean also that they don't know how to use them properly, so they don't even bother to use them. Lack of proper sex education in schools, right? So that persons are not aware that they should use a condom to protect themselves in order to prevent STD and also pregnancy. Good? So you are saying what you think it means to you, also backed up by factual research. I hope you are understanding so far. So that's with the analysis and interpretation of data. Good, let's continue. Make sure you interpret the data and state what you find. You are not interpreting the data when you only explain what is displayed in task six. Remember I said that? Don't only represent the data because you would have already done that in task six. Discuss all related responses according to the research question. Remember, choose the questions as around cause, effect, and solution. Good. Now the findings. You need three statements of findings from the investigation. And your statements of findings must answer your research question. So you need the major cause of the problem. You need the major effect or impact of the problem. And you need the major solution. So whatever in, in the three categories had the highest percentage. For example, if I said the major cause for... 60% said that the major cause for teenage pregnancy is not using a condom. So findings will say the major cause for teenage pregnancy is not using a condom. And you don't write this up. The major impact of teenage pregnancy on a teenage mother is the major solution put forward to reduce the high levels of teenage pregnancy in my community or in my school is 
bam, and you're done. So three statements of findings and you're done. Now on to the recommendation and implement, implementation strategy. You are expected to make two recommendations based on the findings from the data collected, as well as one suggestion as to how you would implement one of the recommendations you gave. Good. So you need two recommendations, one implementation strategy. So recommendation is what you think could be done, right, to remedy the problem. The implementation strategy, though, goes a little bit further than the recommendation. So you need to say the who, what, where, when, how for the implementation strategy. For example, this is, this is an example. Member of the community could hold a town meeting to discuss ways in which they would remove these insane persons from the community. So that's how you could fix the problem. But this is more a recommendation than an implementation strategy. For me, the implementation strategy would require more details, like what you are going to do to actually solve the problem, or what you're going to discuss at the meeting, and how you would move forward from the meeting. Good. We are not done just yet. Good. Other elements of the research. These elements, I think you get about four points. Four points. I think four points. Title page, or what we now call cover page, right? This comes immediately behind the cover page. It should have only the title in bold type. It's the same as the cover page. A title page is no longer needed. Or oh, I really should have edited this. So you need your cover page. Good. You need your acknowledgements. You can just research how to write an acknowledgement. You need a table of contents. Ensure that your pages are properly organized and numbered. Ensure that they are numbered because many times students submit SBA with a table of contents and the pages are not numbered. Then the table of contents is not relevant and it don't make any sense. Ensure that it is numbered. One, we went through the typing already and we went through the margin as to the specifications that are needed, great. The search must be typed, we went through that already. We're almost there, we're almost done. You need a bibliography, right? List the sources where you have gotten the information from. And you must use APA style in writing the bibliography. You can always research how to write a bibliography using the APA format. Good. Remember that plagiarism is a crime, so don't take anybody's work and present it as your own. Don't take anybody's SBA and present it as your own. Do your own SBA. If you use part of person's work in your SBA, right, if they get it from a textbook that is or an internet source, right, put it in the bibliography so that we know that it's not your original quote or statement. Great. All right, good. Glossaries is necessary. These are terms that you use throughout your research. You might want to explain what the meanings are. An appendix, if necessary, you can put pictures, a newspaper article in the appendix. Good. Remember, if you do not submit your research, you automatically fail the exam. So ensure that you submit a research. No SBA means that's an automatic failure. All right, so if you have any questions or concerns, you can post them down below. Any questions or concerns, ladies and gentlemen, post them down below. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to like, share, leave a comment, and subscribe. Also go over to my other YouTube channel, that's Corey Fences and subscribe as well thank you if you have any other video ideas that you'd like me to do you can also leave it in the comment section thank you guys